one of God's most magnificent masterpieces in nature is the rainbow. And a rainbow reaching across the sky from one end to the other has been known to stop traffic because of its overwhelming and breathtaking beauty. And throughout history, there have been many myths and many mysteries and many legends surrounding the rainbow, some of which persist uh, even to this day. And while we may not believe those stories, uh, still the rainbow is more than just sunlight passing through droplets of water at different angles, producing a multicolored spectrum of beauty and of light. The rainbow is much more than that. Because while the, the sun and the moon and the stars all tell of creation, they all tell of the glory of God, but the rainbow gives us a message from God himself. Words that he spoke to Noah, and to his family, and words that he is speaking to us today. It is a promise made by God himself and written in the sky. There's nothing quite like a rainbow. And so beginning in Genesis chapter 9, after the waters of the flood had dried upon the earth, and Noah and his family left the ark. They were all alone, weren't they? They were, there was just eight of them. And as they looked around, the entire landscape of the earth was still a disaster area. But at least the deluge of water was gone. But still, the question was this. Now, what were they to do? What were they to do as life began again in this new world? Yes, death had given way to life, but what kind of life? And so beginning in verse 1 of Genesis chapter 9, God gives them direction. He gives them instruction things that we need to know as well. In spite of the fact that they were all sinners, in spite of the fact that we are all sinners, we are told God blessed Noah and his sons, and so he blessed everyone in that family. He blessed them all just as he has blessed all of us with life. We all have life. And so God said to them, be fruitful, parah, in Hebrew, flourish, and multiply, rava, in, in Hebrew, become abundant, and fill the earth. And if those words sound somewhat familiar, they should, because this is the same blessing that God gave in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, to Adam and to Eve while they were in the garden. It is the blessing of life. It is the blessing of marriage. It is the blessing of a family, the blessing of children. The joy that we find in those relationships is a gift of God. Something that we should value and protect instead of tear apart. 
And God says in verse 2, so that you might take your place over the animal kingdom in this world, as it was from the beginning. Now, he says, the fear of you and the terror of you shall be upon every wild beast of the earth and upon every bird of the sky and on everything that creeps on the ground. In addition to that, the fear of you shall be upon all of the fish of the sea. This fear of you shall keep you safe from them. So, into your hand they are given to be used by you, not abused, but used for your benefit on the earth. According to God, that is the order of things. And so he says in verse 3, Now every moving thing that is alive, everything, has the potential to be used as food for you though I suppose there is much that we probably do not care to eat. Uh, but God tells us that is our decision to make. So he says, I give them all to you, as I gave the green plant to you for food. As it says in 1 Timothy 4, 4, everything has been created by God for good. It is good. It is good for food, and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with gratitude. Well, that leaves a lot of room, doesn't it, for dinner tonight. There's a wide variety of food that is available for us to choose from. So, have a fish sandwich. Have a steak dinner. Have a garden salad or, or have a bowl of rice with some vegetables on the side. But whatever you choose to have, give God the glory for what you have received. That's the criteria. But God warns us in verse 4, for your own protection, you shall not eat flesh with its life still in it. That is, he says, with its blood. To avoid disease. To avoid parasites. Simply cook your food. Cook the meat. Cook the fish. Cook the chicken. Some simple but sound advice. And to bring stability to society, to protect its citizens, to protect us, those who are in authority must bring order. They must bring peace. They must bring safety. That is their responsibility. And so surely, God says in verse 5, I will require your lifeblood. I will require your death if you willfully take the life of another person. And from the hand of every beast, I will require death if that animal kills a man or a woman. Then that animal must be put to death because that animal has overstepped its bounds. It is out of order, out of the order of creation. And from the hand of every man I will require death, God continues, and from the hand of every man's brother I will require the life of that man if that person murders another person. This is not about personal vengeance. You will recall in Matthew 26, 52, that Jesus said that if we take up the sword, 
then we will perish by the sword. This is not about war, where we are defending our country. And this is not about an accidental killing. This is more than that. This is murder. So God adds this in verse 6. Whoever sheds man's blood, by man his blood shall be shed. Why? He says, for in the image, Selem in Hebrew, in the likeness of God, he made man. Mankind is a unique creation. His life is sacred, and so it must be protected. And it is those who are in authority who are responsible to carry out the punishment of death. That is not our responsibility, as we are reminded in Romans chapter 13, where it says that those who are in authority over us are servants of God for good and not for evil. So they bear the sword as an avenger of God to bring wrath upon those who practice evil. According to God, this is to be the order in our society. And as for you, God says in verse 7, be fruitful and multiply. Populate the earth abundantly and multiply in it. Then God spoke to Noah and to his sons with him, saying this in verse 9. He says, now behold, in Hebrew, listen carefully to my words. I establish, I myself establish, Kum, I make firm and inalterable, unalterable, my covenant, barith in Hebrew, my promise. I will fulfill my word to you and to your descendants after you and to every creature that is with you, to the birds and, and to the cattle and to every beast of the earth that is with you, to all that comes out of the ark, even to the wild animal. So, this day, I establish my covenant with you and I declare that all flesh shall never again be cut off. Karath in Hebrew, cut down and destroyed by the water of a flood. Neither shall a flood again destroy the earth. So verse 12, God says this. This is the sign of the covenant. Oh, in Hebrew. This is my pledge. This is the evidence of my promise, which I am making between me and you and between every living creature that is with you. A promise for all successive generations after you. Verse 13, he says, I set my bow in place in the cloud for all to see. Catch it in Hebrew. A bow which was used in battle. A bow which will now appear in the sky as a rainbow. And it shall be a sign. It'll be a pledge. It'll be evidence of the covenant between me and all the earth. I have put away my bow. I have set aside my wrath. And it shall come about that in the course of time, when I bring a cloud over the earth, over the sky, 
that the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember, Zahir in Hebrew, you will know that I know because I cannot forget my covenant, which is between me and you and between every living creature, between all flesh, that I will never again destroy the earth with a flood of water. When the rainbow is in the cloud, God says in verse 16, then I will look upon it and I will remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant. This is a binding promise that I have made, that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Gives us a little bit of a different picture of a rainbow, doesn't it? And we are reminded of this in Isaiah 54, verse 9, where it says that, the waters of Noah shall not flood the earth again. This is the promise of the rainbow. This is the offer of peace between God and his creation, as we are told in Psalm 136 over and over again, where it says his loving kindness is everlasting. His loving kindness is everlasting through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. You've been listening to Bruce David Bell pastor of Berean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.